Mason Elliewood exposed. Is he good with items or is he bad with items? We'll see today. Yeah, this tournament mode is probably the best thing to happen to this game. I know the rule set is kind of whack. Two stock, two and a half minutes to finish each match, but the way I look at it, it helps everyone finish their matches quicker. I wouldn't want to wait on people who are playing, you know, three stock, seven minute matches. So while I prefer those rules in other contexts, here, I guess they respect the player's time and want convenience, so I don't mind it at all. And once you actually play it, it feels better than it looks. This mode is so much fun. And I never really play with items. This is my first items tournament. I played a decent amount in my free time. But I haven't really been on whenever the items ones pops up, uh, pop up. So I figured I would check it out, see how I do. Items are fun to me from time to time. I do prefer one-on-one, -on -one, no items on pretty standard stages. But it's fun to, you know, play Smash how it was intended every now and then. Am I gonna... Yeah, here it is. He was far away from me, but... If you do side, side, upside, I'll oh, rip you two. Then it basically pulls them in and makes the sweet spot more consistent on the fourth hit. So if you're just doing side, side, you know, side for all of them, and you're wondering why it's not all connecting, or they fall out of it and don't get sweet spotted, you can fix it just by doing side, side, upside. Yeah, that Mewtwo. I was so afraid when he grabbed the hammer, and then he's just dead. Nobody wants to approach here, so I'm just like, alright, I'll grab the items. Everyone just wants to charge smashes and hope people walk into them. <laughs> this Mii's movement, I can't nail him down. Oh my god. Come on, fall into it. <laughs> oh, he's like trying to camp the side of the stage that's uh, kind of fucked right now. It feels so liberating to do Smash again, or just something besides three houses. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the game. I had so much fun playing it with an audience uh, in chat. Like, some of the most fun I've had, but after 30 days of streaming almost every day, I think there were only two days out of that time span I didn't stream, and there were some multiple part videos because my computer or internet would crash, or I would want to split my day in, you know, two streams. I don't remember if the last one happened, but... <laughs> He just got completely screwed by the hand. That's what you get for camping the side of the stage. Yeah, that hero player really did not want to approach. I feel like there's always at least one or two other heroes in these tournaments, but whenever I play hero, there's none to be found. I'm the hero. <laughs> so yeah, this is an eight-person tournament, which I prefer the bigger tournaments. I like more competition. I like every round filtering out the... Winners and losers or whatever. And playing like against people who get farther and farther feels more exciting to me, but... This is what they had, so I played it. And this is not going on right now. It took forever for me to get this video out because Sony Pro Vegas has an issue. So if you take, you know, Elgato footage or gameplay footage and it comes out a lot darker than it actually is, that's because in project settings... I think it's in properties. Yeah, it's in properties in Vegas 15. The video levels are 8-bit by default, so you want to change them to 32-bit floating vi uh, point video. Yeah, 32-bit floating point video to make it so that it's not dark after rendering, and it looks basically like what it is. Yeah, it just feels nice to finally have Pro Vegas. Like, I've had it, but it's really intimidating to learn. It's kind of complicated, and there's some issues for no reason. Or like some things that are more complicated than they should be. So I've always leaned towards Windows Movie Maker. But I'm really glad I made the change. And I make the scrubbiest move of my life. I <laughs> air dodge into Waluigi the God. Yeah, I deserve to lose my stock for that. And I'm having such an awkward time moving, you know, moving around on these platforms. It just... Oh. Uh, I'm so used to standard stages. Like trying to move on these moving platforms with weird heights. Messes me up. I don't know why I just... <laughs> That's not safe on shield, buddy. That's punishable by uh, Roy's final smash out of shield. <laughs> oh, good times. But yeah, he really only rolled and threw out smash attacks. He was really good at grabbing those items. It was like, it's so weird playing against these players because you expect them to respect your space more or to not do a certain habit a bunch of times, but you just have to... Except that they will. And here's the biggest choke of my life. Dropping down from the platform with this thing. I should have stayed up there. 
and try to trap him, but luckily, you can air dodge out of it pretty quickly. Yeah, this is pretty tense. He has the lead on me. He's definitely better at using, uh, playing in an item setting with, like, more chaotic stages with more going on. This stage was a legal tournament stage in Melee at one point. BAM! Yeah, I looked it up after I recorded this. 42.5% damage counter. Just absolutely nuts. He has this huge lead on me. He seems unkillable. And then I just stand there, bait him into attacking me, and hit him with that beefy Roy counter. Beautiful. I love this screen so much. And I figured... This is pretty short, so I would enter another tournament and see how I do. Yeah, you get spirits for entering tournaments and winning them. I guess you do for any result you get, but like you get all the uh, four-star legend spirits, or yeah, that's what they're called, legends. If you win, and the more rounds there are, the more spirits you get. So yeah, I also didn't have a Roy video besides the one he shares with K. Rule, and it's a short video, and he only got half of it, so you know what? This is my boy. I have two prom videos, a bunch of Ganon videos, a bunch of Joker videos, so I gotta do my boy some justice. And I know there's a lot of people on this channel who love Roy, because he's the best. But yeah, the way tournament mode works is it switches between free-for-alls with items on random stages, and then one-on-ones with no items on the Omega versions of stages, but both have the same stock count and timer. And yeah, three houses. I love the game. It's an amazing game, but it just has a few big issues. The strengths definitely far outweigh the weaknesses. Keep in mind when I'm talking about it, but the weaknesses are definitely still there. Like, while the strengths outweigh them, they still weigh the game down a fair amount. And my rating for it is an 8 out of 10, I would say. Like, that's still really high on my scale. It takes a lot to get a 9 or higher on my scale, and I don't know if I have any 10s right now because... Anything I give a 10, or anything close to a 10, it always drops down to a 9 later, or... Yeah, like around a 9, so... That's still really good on my scale. The thing is, the game has a crazy... Yeah, this Lucas wasn't using the shield for some re uh, reason, but they like using the air dodge. So I would just smack them for it, and I take advantage of it more later. But yeah, there's a ton of padding for some reason. For a game with three routes, and a route split in one of them, that happens halfway through the game. I'm not gonna say any spoilers, just keep in mind that one of the routes lets you pick a side and they both do different things. So yeah, basically four routes. Well, three and a half routes, I'd say. But you wanna, I guess, set up a file for that one route you're playing anyways. Like, all that replay value and they still felt like adding all this padding and the pacing is kind of atrocious. So what happens is there's gonna be a big juicy story mission where you play on this really unique map, you get a lot of, you know, these nice plot details. Plot twists and all that. Learn a lot about the plot and just everything going on behind the scenes. Slowly over time. The game has a really great story and writing. So you get to experience that too. But then after that, a new month starts and you basically have to go back to the monastery. Every character has a new line of dialogue. Or, well not one new line, but like, usually one to four lines. And you want to talk to everyone at the monastery to get the most out of the story. Goodbye, Leia. I'm so sorry. So that's what I did every single month. There's also, uh, they also often have multiple dialogue options, so you want to answer to the best of your ability and hopefully get some support points with them. So you have that too. And what else is there? God, I'm just, it's so hard to think of it off the top of my head. I have notes, but I decided to write entire, <laughs> entire paragraphs for them, and it's fucking me over right now. But yeah, I feel like if they just trimmed the fat, and made the game a little more, I don't know, stream, I don't know if streamlines the word, but definitely cut out the fat. I think it would be a better game, and it has more potential. I don't know if someone rage DC'd here, because usually when that happens, the game takes a while to load. I don't think the Lucas did because he had the same habits from before. Yeah. He liked to roll in air dodge a lot, so... I just kept an eye out for that and I reacted to it. Yeah, hopefully they take these issues in hindsight and improve on them for future titles. And it's still an amazing game that I highly recommend. And don't let, you know, my... 
8 rating, because a lot of people got mad when Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire got like a 7.8, I believe. Like, they thought that was too low. And then memed on the whole water thing. So, like, people get mad when their favorite games get 7s and 8s. And it's like, those are still great ratings. I don't know. I think I just have high standards for mine. I don't know if this person was named Idiots to, like, say that it was an Idiots account. Or to call everyone else Idiots and just use, uh... <laughs> I don't know. Is that enough? I forgot the name of it. Apostrophe? The thing that shows ownership. Oh my god. <laughs> By the way, I got a 100 on English 3 in college, and I can't remember for the life of me right now. But yeah, idiots. This person would throw out, like, moves and, like, throw out that forward air a lot. Just big hitboxes, and I didn't do as good a job as I could of, like, punishing them. They weren't changing their habits, and I wasn't punishing that hard enough. So yeah, you also have to spend your activity points at the Monastery. Late in the game you have 10, so you have to do 10 different things before you can even end the day, or before you can go without really wasting any time. And I was also streaming, so when I read all the characters' dialogue, I wanted to let the full voice lines play out. RIP. Roy walking with that thing is so funny, and I got the glitch where it like, yeah, there's uh, invincibility in the middle. I know that from playing with items of friends. Look at this, the fucking bait. Good lord. That was some amazing item play. I was just so hype after that. Oh. But yeah, Three Houses is great. Don't let my criticisms deter you. I'm just very honest about the media I enjoy. And I really like the teaching aspect. Like, the fact that you're... This, the professor to your students rather than just their commander is a really cool aspect of the game that stands out and makes me want to recommend it. And yeah, despite the pacing issues, it has an amazing soundtrack, amazing writing, amazing characters. Uh, lots of choice. The most choice in a Fire Emblem game by far with both the story and the gameplay. Lots of different things you can do to have a different, unique experience. And I just highly recommend it. And I'm also done with grinding the final two maps of Blue Lions 18 times. If anyone wants more details on that, I will go into it. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll end it here.